Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, Looking around the globe and food, what we're going to be talking about is the color of food and why colors are so important as far as the nutrients are concerned, the benefits to not only our bodies, but our minds and our spirits, and how that we can tell about what we're eating and the importance of it by its color. Renetta Coleman is a certified food for life instructor of the Rooted Dish in Washington, D.C., and she's going to explain some of the ways that we can look at the colors and understand what it is that we're eating for not having enough colors, how we can change that so that we're actually putting the rainbow into our food. Renetta, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Well, looking at this learn, cook, live, I just love this mantra as far as the rooted dish is concerned. Tell us a little bit about the rooted dish and how does this mantra fit in to what you're doing and how it's important to us that are watching. Well, through rooted dish, I teach plant-based cooking and nutrition classes. And I want people to learn why plant-based eating is so important for their health. I want people to cook their own food so they're in control of their health. And I want them to take that and live an amazing long life. I tell you, I think it's fantastic because you're looking at longevity and health and energy as being embedded into their day-to-day -day life. And not many people really think about that, Granetta. And thank you for your leadership for that. Uh, vegetarians, what are they and how do they differ from the vegans that we're going to talk about in just a minute? Well, vegetarians are people who primarily get their nutrition from plants, but they do allow themselves to eat dairy products and eggs, but they avoid meat products, poultry, and seafood. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at uh, vegans and why the difference and uh, why either give up the dairy and eggs or why not? I and mean, why do the vegetarians continue to hang on to those types of animal proteins? Well, a vegan is someone who gets all of their nutrients from plants. So they give up the meat, the seafood, the poultry, and the dairy and eggs. And someone may not want to go that far because when you're raised on a certain diet, it can be really challenging to give up essentially almost everything that you're used to eating and switching it over. So vegetarianism is kind of a middle step that a lot of people take before they go vegan. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a natural progression, but I would assume that there are a number of people that get to uh, be vegans and be vegetarians. And so whatever they choose, they may continue that throughout their life. Uh, and it is better to reduce the carbon loading on the planet. And that's why this slide is really so important. How does the food that we eat directly impact Mother Earth? Well, it's really interesting that the food that is better for us is also better for the planet. Uh, based on land use, it takes a lot more land to raise animals than to grow plants. It creates a lot more pollution when you're doing that animal uh, husbandry. And also animals drink a lot of water. They need a lot of water when you're raising them as compared to growing plants. So we're using a lot of land, a lot of water, and animals create much more carbon in them, in the, 
themselves and also in the production of animal products than raising plants. So it's really better for the planet if more people can go plant-based. An interesting thing about it too, Granada, is that uh, through the plant-based uh, diet, we're actually providing more green plants that can absorb carbon out of the air and help to reduce greenhouse gases emissions into the air, uh, where if we're having animals, they really are uh, putting more carbon loading into the atmosphere uh, and also the land and the water. So uh, it's much better to go that. Why it's so important to have this balance as far as the food that you're teaching people to cook and appreciate and, and eat, uh, along with exercises and other ways that we can improve our health. Well, a plant-based diet has been scientifically proven to prevent or reverse a lot of chronic diseases that people are suffering from today, like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. So from that aspect, a plant-based diet is phenomenal for you. And also exercise is really key to all this. And I know this is something you actually talk about uh, in your classes. Why tie in exercise to a plant-based diet? Well, there's two things you can think about. Number one, you can lose weight on a plant-based diet without exercise at first. But then when you get to a healthier weight and you want to exercise, plants can help you recover more quickly from the stress of exercising because they have so many antioxidants and they're also anti-inflammatory. Now looking at the, uh, the beautiful colors that we have here, how is it that we can actually look at our food, know it by its color, and know somewhat of the nutrients and the flavor as you have here that we are actually going to be able to enjoy out of that mix of colors on our plate, in the bowl, or on the skewer? Well, color is a key indication of the vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that are actually in your food. So if you look at your plate and it's all brown, or it's all green, or it's all red, then you're only getting one type of nutrition. And you really want to mix it up. You want your plate to look like a rainbow. That's why they say eat the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Get the fresh fruit and vegetables get nutrient dense foods that have a lot of different colors. And that will also encourage a lot of different flavors for you. And also reduces the carbon loading on the atmosphere. And I think that's something that more and more people are thinking about, but we really need to think about uh, not only are we what we eat, uh, but mother earth either benefits or suffers by what we eat. Uh, going to the seasons, why is it important to eat the foods of the various seasons? So that kind of ties into your carbon footprint point, because if you are getting food in season, that means you're getting it most likely from a local source. So there's going to be less energy involved in getting it to you and keeping it fresh. Also getting food in season means that it's going to be picked very close to when it's given to you. And so it's gonna have much more nutrition. Nutrition. Now, one of the things that you've emphasized in your classes, and uh, we talked about it just before the program, is that by having these types of seasonal foods, we're really helping to expand the economies within local communities, provide uh, green businesses, also green jobs uh, for local citizens. How do you emphasize that uh, that not only are you getting a better food, but also it's better for the economy within the local community? Well, the way you find um, see, and if you're a local farmer's market, you're gonna meet some local farmers who farming is so challenging that in order for them to make money, it's much easier for them to sell directly to you than to have a middleman in place. So you, you can support local farmers, you can support lo local businesses by going to those farmers markets and buying seasonal food. That's great. Uh, let's go through some of these foods. What are we looking at uh, here, Granetta? And how are each of these important for us and actually benefit us as far as, again, this balance of uh, the mind, body, and spirit? 
All right, so here we have some butternut squash in the center, some sweet potatoes on the side. Those are those orange vegetables that have something called beta carotene in them, which is an antioxidant, which is actually great for your mind and your body. It can help boost your mood. And then on the other um, circle, there is Brussels sprouts, which are a cruciferous vegetable, which is wonderful for cancer prevention. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, each of these really do have direct medical benefits. And it goes back to that old mantra, we are what we eat and food is medicine. Uh, apples, most people really do like apples. Uh, how did you dress this up to make it look so attractive? Well, I don't want people to think that a plant-based diet is a diet of deprivation. So this is a delicious dessert that you can have where you basically bake some delicious apples with cinnamon, a little sweetener, and you crumble some nuts and oats on top, and it's delicious. And also we're getting a, a real mix then as far as the types of foods we should be eating, correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very pretty. Uh, and also not only can you feast with your eyes, but you feast with your tummy, correct? That's true. Some people think that they can't bake without eggs, and you actually can. This is a delicious pumpkin spice muffin. And instead of using an egg, you're using baking powder and baking soda. So you're getting that orange color, that antioxidant of beta carotene, and you're getting to eat a muffin. So it's a win-win. Win-win <laughs> uh, for us, win-win for the environment as well. Brussels sprouts, why so important? As I previously mentioned, Brussels sprouts are in that cruciferous uh, vegetable family along with bro uh, broccoli and cauliflower. And it's super important for cancer prevention. So you can roast these up and enjoy them any day. Yeah, and this is something about Brussels sprouts. Uh, many people really don't know much about them or don't really eat them. Uh, but I can have a snack on what I see right there and it's quite delicious just to take those, braise them, or even put them in the microwave and season them a little bit. And it's a wonderful snack or have it as a, as a meal. Uh, butternut mac and cheese. Now that's, that's a stretch. How does that work? Well, you take that delicious butternut squash you saw in that earlier slide, you roast it and you puree the pulp and you add a little bit of plant-based milk and a little bit of nutritional yeast, and you can make a cheese-like sauce that is so rich and so creamy. I don't think you'll forget the cheese. I don't think you'll miss the cheese. I tell you, this is really a pretty dish. And I like the way that you're presenting all these because, you know, you really have, it's kind of like curb appeal for a house. You need to have food that looks good. And then you think, okay, I can go for that. Smoothies. Smoothies are a wonderful either meal rep replacement. If you're too busy for a sit-down breakfast, you can grab it on the go. This is a sweet potato smoothie that takes, tastes like a sweet potato pie. And, you know, plant-based eating can be fun, flavorful, and delicious. Oh, I tell you, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Going out on the root of dish, uh, what do you see as far as people accepting this over the next 5, 10, or 15 years moving away from animal proteins more and more into plant-based. And we got to be quick. Well, I think that the trend is obvious. Plant-based eating is everywhere. And I think that in five or 10 years, people are not going to be um, shocked and surprised to see plant-based eating everywhere. That, that's fantastic. Granetta Coleman, Rooted Dish, thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.